All right, cool beans. Hope you guys did enjoy that small montage. I'm Hex. I'm gonna be going over another Nightblade game build that I like to call the Toxic Blade. Literally the click of one button and you can honestly just delete anybody you want. But quick announcement, I am planning on streaming on Twitch here sometime soon. So if you are looking for, forward to that, I will be more streaming more of like Tales of Tribute or more PvE land content because I do play on console. So PvP performance on console isn't the best to put it nicely. So yeah, I will be doing more of that. So if you wanted to look, check out that, I'd, I'd much greatly appreciate that. But if you don't care about me at all, as always, I'll have 10 stamps on screen down below if you're looking for anything specific. But without further ado, let's talk to Barrage our way into the build. Alright, so for the first set we run is Swamp Raider, 2 piece adds crit, 3 piece adds max damage, 4 piece adds weapon and spell damage, 5 piece adds up to 600 weapon and spell damage to your poison and disease damage abilities. This thing is very powerful. Next we do run battle orcs. honestly every game build always run battle orcs if you can. When you use an ultimate ability, you gain weapon and spell damage equal to the amount spent, and you also get physical and spell penetration equal to 23 times the amount for 12 seconds. So if we have a 500 battle orcs, we get 500 weapon spell damage, and we also get 11,500 pen from one set. So the more ulti you have, the more damage we do, which is always, always, always really good. And for the last set, we run deadly. Two piece adds weapon and spell damage, three piece adds crit, four piece adds more weapon and spell damage, five piece increases the damage or damage over time and channel abilities do by 15%. We do 15% more damage with Toxic Barrage with this because Toxic Barrage is a channeled ability. So basically think of this set as granting both major and minor berserk on our ability. So the way we run it, we do have a deadly bow on the front bar. I do have a berserker enchant, increases your weapon weapon and spell damage by 348. I think this is the best way to go. Even more weapon and spell damage when you do hit your Toxic Barrage on the target. You could go a shock to get a minor vulnerability, but I feel like this is probably the best way to go, honestly. We do run sharpen, obviously, because we do want some penetration on the build. Next, we do have the Maelstrom Perfect restoration stuff on the back bar with an absorb magic enchant very good i do have decisive obviously i feel like decisive is the best way to go just because we can get ultis faster because the faster we get ultis the more we can gank and obviously the more ulti we get with battle orcs, the more we can do so for the body we do run five medium two light so the way i do it is i have like battle orcs hell and then shoulder and for my medium all medium swap raider because it only comes in medium chest belt hands legs and feet and for the jewelry we run all deadly so for the body we run all full divines all max mag we are expecting more into max mag because like i say in every game build night plays do benefit from a little passive called magicka flood from the siphoning skills increases your max magicka by eight percent while siphoning ability is slotted so very strong very good and we do go full divines obviously full divines is the best way to go for any ganker gives us the most damage we can possibly get for the jewelry we do go all infused spell damage enchants because we do run a certain pot called spell pots which should perfectly lead us into this next category our pot so the main reason we run around these pots is because we want magic on the build since we're mostly just cloaking around so whatever whatever major buff we can get with that so in this case we're gonna get major sorcery so that's our basically our 20 percent weapon or spell damage in this case we get spell damage so that's the reason we run these for the food we do run ghastly eyeball or ice cream whatever the heck it wants to be called increases max mag by almost 4600 and our mag recub just shy of 406 more max mag means more damage and more mag recub means we can spam cloak and do whatever we want we don't need health obviously since we're a ganker but enough of that let's go over the skills now All right, so for the first skill we run is Healthy Offering on a really good solid burst heal that also gives us mind many, but the main reason we run it, like I said earlier, from the siphoning skill, we do have a little passive called Magical Flip. Increases your max mag by up to 8% while siphoning ability of solder. Very good. Next, we do run Camel Hunter. Obviously, any build these days runs Camel Hunter, especially gankers. Like I always say, I feel like a broken record. You reveal targets, you also get crit. Doesn't matter. But the main reason we run this is because you also get minor berserk for five seconds after dealing critical damage from an enemy's flank. And we also do benefit from some juicy, juicy fighter skill passive. Slayer, increases your weapon to Spell damage by 3% for each fighter guild ability slotted. And most importantly, Banish the Wicked. You generate three ultimate whenever you kill an enemy. Very juicy passes, very good. Next, we do run Impale. This is an execute that you could follow up. It's a little clunky to use. The main reason we run it is because we do benefit from hemorrhage. While well, with an assassination ability slotted, it increases your critical damage by 10%. And dealing critical damage grants you and your group minor savagery, increasing your weapon crit by 6% for 20 seconds. So powerful. 10% crit damage and 6% crit. Oh, what? How can you say no to this? Next, we do run Conceal Weapon, which I honestly, I don't even know how this is even allowed in this game one of the most powerful passes in the entire game as a lost depth while slotted when you leave sneak invisibility or major expedition ends while in combat your damage done is increased by 10 percent for five another this is basically major berserk right here we get from just having this ability slotted so strong so powerful i can't believe this thing actually exists next we do run inner light blah 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 crit but the main reason we run this is because while slotted your max magicka is increased by five percent and we also do benefit from a major skill passive called magic controller increases your max mag and 
my recoil by 2% for each major skill buff slot. So that having just that one ability slot, it gives us an extra 7% max mag. So we're just getting so many buffs on the front part. So the only problem with this setup is that we do no damage outside of our ult, which I will talk in a little bit. So if you didn't want to fully rely on the ult, you could swap this, the lethal arrow. But now let's get into the meat and potatoes or the cheese of the build. And that is Toxic Barrage. Unleash a barrage of arrows and an enemy dealing <laughs> a ridiculous amount of poison damage over four seconds. Also puts a nasty dawn on them after a one second delay. So this thing, honestly, full warning is just full cheese. This is honestly the cheesiest ultimate I've ever had and the cheesiest gank I've ever done. Like you literally don't have to think. You see a target, you click your ultimate and good night. Like let's let's look look how look how high I got this. I believe it's like 117k total tip on. Like let's check let's check out the screenshot I took earlier today. Yeah, see that? From a screenshot I took earlier today. Look at that. 135,000 damage. Just ridiculous, crazy. And this isn't even hard to get. You just shoot your ultimate at 500 dollars and this is how hard you'll be hitting. Honestly, this whole bar is honestly just buffs at this point. Like you could just tell. Let's go over the back bar now. Pretty simple. Phantasm escape. Mostly just used there for the for the snare immunity. Removes and grants immunity to snares and mobilizations. Also, you know, really good to get major evasion. Makes it a little tankier. Channel acceleration. Grants us major expedition for 12 seconds, but the main reason we run it. Grants minor force for one minute. Increases your critical damage by 10%. Very solid. Next, we do run radiant and regeneration. I will say this all the time. Rest in peace. Radiant and regeneration. How the mighty have truly fallen. Basically, a small potent heal that just keeps up one of our skills. Next, we do run shadow disguise. Obviously, I mean, come on. A nightblade gang with cloak. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> like really cloak yourself for three seconds also your next direct damage attack will always be a crit use within three seconds mostly just here for the cloak next we do we're on sated fury this is basically the vamp toggle increases our weapon spell damage by 60 every two seconds stacking up to five times so we can get 300 weapon spell damage we do run the stated fury morph on this one please 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 push to this morph immediately you cannot sustain the other morph with radiant regeneration it's too much so like every stack you get it's going to increase the cost by like 360 with the other morph with this one it removes it it reduces it down to 300 and we do run re reviving barrier honestly i do really like reviving barrier on the back bar mostly just there for the you could use the ultimate in a very very sticky situation and it has happened to me before but mostly just used for the magic aid increases your magic recovery by 10 percent for each support ability slotted honestly not much to talk about these are pretty simple because honestly you're honestly all these skills are just buffs for your main cheese toxic barrage <laughs> but enough of that let's go over the stat sheets now Okay, so for the stat sheets, you won't see much on the stat sheets themselves, since for the two sets we run, Swamp Raider and Deadly don't actually show up on the stat sheets, so that's why the stat sheets won't look as nice, but just that solo picture of Toxic Barrage damage tooltip is just more than enough to kind of get you sold. We're at for our max man, we're at 35.6k, very solid. Maximum health, 19.2k, really nice for a ganker. Max stam, 16.1k for a stam, very, very good. Magic recovery, just a little over 1500, very nice. Health recovery is always a joke to read. Stam recovery, just shy of 700. Fully buffed, we're at 6036 spell damage, very, very good. Well, our weapon and spell crit is at 40, at 39.3. When we proc our hemorrhage passes, this can bump our weapon crit up to 45.3, so almost 50% crit on that, very, very juicy. But everybody wants to see the fully proc battle works, right? Our spell damage is at 7163 full ballers and our penetration is at 17.3k. Very, very juicy. So good in there. Our weapon crit is at 45.3. Very solid stat. All right, so for our resistances, it doesn't really matter. We're a ganker, 17.1k for a spell. Physical resistance is at 15.6k and our crit resist is at our base 1320, which are 20% less crit damage taken. For attributes, I go full 64 points into magic. Obviously, we're a ganker. We're just trying to bump up that max max. So for the race, I am a dark elf. I honestly, on every gank build, I am a dark elf. Dark elf is just so solid. Another option would be Khajiit. Khajiit is actually very, very strong for this build and could honestly work. Either one's fine. So obviously, for dark elf, we do get dynamic. Increases your max mag and max stand by like I always say, max mag increases our damage done and healing done. And max stam obviously lets us get an extra roll dodge or an SCC break. Because like I always say, any build caught without stam, well, let's just hope it's to keep nearby for you to res that. Next, we do run resist flame. Nice little passive increases your flame resist by 4620. Very, very solid. Honestly, if we do get caught, because the main counter to this build, and honestly, any open world build, any any build these days, is mag DKs. Mag DKs just shred anything. So we'll just be able to get away from them, not take as much damage. Next, we do run ruination. Increases your weapon and spell damage by 258. We'll never send on an extra weapon and spell damage. Okay, so for the Mundus, we do run the shadow. Increases your critical damage critical healing by 70 percent honestly pound for pound the strongest money for damage in the entire game obviously especially for gankers we are a stage three vampire stage two or stage three is good at minimum stay b stage two just for one simple passive strike from the shadow when you leave sneak invisibility or mist in our case invisibility or sneak your weapon and spell damage is increased by 300 for six seconds so powerful i am a stage three vampire since we're not really strained on sustain so why not get an extra tankiness reduce your damage taken by up to 30 percent based on your missing health very good very solid mixes a little tankier just in case we do get cocked but now let's go over the cp all right, for the CP, it's pretty simple. 
Fighting Finesse increases your critical damage and critical healing done by up to 8%. Mastered Arms increases your damage done with direct damage attacks by up to 6%. Deadly Aim increases your damage done with single target attacks by up to 6%. And Wrathful Strike grants up to a total of 205 weapon and spell damage. So very strong, very solid passive. I really do like this one. You could go Backstabber instead, and that honestly would give you the more <laughs> you would do. You would hit so hard with that. The only problem is you'd have to fully hit your combo from the back. You're not always guaranteed, but obviously another option. Okay, so for the red CP, we do run Celebrity. Increases our movement speed by 10%. Honestly, the best CP in the entire game. Bastion increases effectiveness of your damage shields we don't care about that what we do care increases damage against shielded enemies by up to 15 percent this is the only red cp in the entire game that actually increases our damage so if an enemy has its damage shield we do 15 percent more damage to them next we do run relentlessness be center for your cause you to gain major protection for three seconds reducing your damage taken by 10 percent next we do run balance vitality increases our max health by 1400 honestly we don't want to be too squishy so being able to bump that little health a little bit more always nice to have and obviously like i always say the more health you have the more intimidating you look. for the green cp doesn't really matter the only one i would honestly have is sustaining shadows these blessing get the rider and rationer. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the combo rotation. All right, so for the combo rotation, it's pretty difficult. So all you do is buff up, find your target, right here, skeleton man, and melt them away. And that's literally all you do, and you just melt them away. Look at all that damage we're doing. Dude, you don't have to use Vantog if you really didn't want to. Like, this thing is just so easy to do. Like, what I like about this build is that you could really just do this from range. Like, you can honestly just find your target, go anywhere you want. And like right here and then boom pop them away and by the time that by the time they realize they you're already gone but yeah that's pretty much it like it's pretty hard as you can tell very very difficult to perform the only thing i would really keep an eye on is just be careful because when you do pop uh radiant regeneration like i said before it does break your cloak so like if i cloak right now so like i'm hitting hit my regen breaks me out if i click cloak and then pop re regen breaks me out so just be careful with that other than that pretty simple all right but enough of that let's go over the pros and cons of the build So just like any other build, there are obviously our pros and cons. Let's go over the cons. It's a game build. You have, honestly, I don't even want to say you have very little group utility. You have zero group utility. You are very single target. Your whole point is to just go in, kill one kid, and then just wait like a minute, get your ulti back, and then just cheese another kid down, and then wait, and then cheese another kid down. That's the whole point of your build, obviously. And the biggest bane of our existence is detects and mag DKs. And <laughs> divines forbid if a mag DK pops a detect. Let's just hope this is keep nearby for you to res that more than likely at that point. Obviously, we're not just saying duck. We can roll dodge. Thank thankfully from the boat. Another con of the boat, I think as of now, I think as a lot of stats, I think you are able to actually roll dodge toxic barrage now. I seen it like, yeah, people are able to roll dodge, I think it seems like. Another con of the build is you are seen as scummy. We all hate getting ganked and people will BM your body after you gank them for a while. It just happens. It's the natural way of gank builds or any. Gank them plenty of times. Who really cares? You got your clips, you had your fun and that's it. So now let's move on to the pros. Honestly, this was like one of the easiest ganks I've ever done. I thought the onslaught gank was easy. This is honestly easy, even easier. You just click one button, your ultimate, and you just melt someone into oblivion. And that's, that's that simple. It's just, it's that easy. Like, you click, like, I could not believe the first time I, because I used to do another combo where I snipe him into the Toxic Barrage, and it wasn't very strong. And I was like, you know, I'll just try the Toxic Barrage gang straight up. I tried that, and I was just melting kits. Like, literally two tapping kits sometimes at, at certain points with this ultimate. Like, how is this thing even legal? Just crazy amount of damage. Another pro of the build, it's a fun build. As much as we all hate getting ganked, sometimes we don't want to sweat. Sometimes I don't want to sweat. Sometimes I just want to get on the game, have a little fun. Maybe I only have an hour. I don't want to sweat, make some clips, just have a good time, or even just gang with the buddy. Because the whole point of a game is to have fair fun. Honestly, it might seem cheesy, but we're not exploiting anything. No exploits are being happening here. We are playing the game as intended. The biggest pro of this build, it is one of the safest ganks you will ever do in the game. With this build, you can gank people from 41 meters away. All right, but enough of that. Let's go over the alternatives. So for the alternatives, there really is no main alternative. I would honestly wouldn't change anything, but if you for whatever reason wanted to change one, you could change Swamp Raider out and run Order's Wrath. Order's Wrath is a very solid option. It would give you crit, weapon and spell damage, crit. Five piece gives you an even fatter line of crit and also 8% more critical damage done. The reason we want Swamp Raider is because it gives us 600 weapon and spell damage to our base ability. And crit is only really good if you have very, very good solid raw stat. So I don't really want to change too much. The only thing I would really change for alternatives, it's just the skills. I would put on the other morph. So I would put on Snipe, uh, Lethal Arrow. Right now I have Focus Aim. Don't run this one, run the other morph. And that way you can kind of like cheese people down or if you want to just annoy people at range on top of a tower. Not really much on the alternatives. 
Honestly, this was like one of the easiest builds I've ever done. Like, I can't believe how this thing is even balanced. Maybe now that you can roll dodge it. If you couldn't roll dodge this, this honestly would be the most broken gank in the entire game if you couldn't roll dodge it. So players do have the option to roll dodge, so just be careful with that now. But honestly, it was very fun. Very easy to get. Deadly might be a little tricky to get so yeah <laughs> like it's just so dumb like you literally just click your ultimate and you just see people just get melted away and honestly gank doesn't work guess what you weren't you weren't right next to them so by the time they realize what's going on you already cloaked away and there you go i feel i do feel a little scummy for this but honestly it's a fun build it was really fun and honestly that's the point of the game i want everyone just to have fun have a good time all right cool beans very very easy cheesy build if you ever wanted to call like you just want to one tap somebody I hope you did enjoy the build video like the video if you liked it comment your thoughts or experience with the build also anything i might have missed out what build video i should do next subscribe for more hope you do enjoy the rest of this fun montage but most important stay zergy